Hello everyone, Kasia Zmokwa from Digital Art Classes here. Today I will take you for a trip to Nepal. We will take 13 raw files and merge them into this panoramic view in Adobe Camera Raw. Let's begin. Okay, so today for a change we will be working with Adobe Camera Raw. So this is our final result. We will create this panoramic view out of 13 raw files. So let's jump into Finder and here are my files. So I'm going just to close this file in Photoshop, don't save. Let's now jump to Finder and all you need to do is to just select, locate and select all the images that you want to merge into panoramic view. So I have taken these 13 files without tripod freehand on the top of the hill in Nepal. I climbed quite high, but for Nepalese standards, apparently this was not a mountain, this was just a hill. So I have taken this series of images and I'm going to select them all. So let's just hit Command A. I have all of my frames selected and all I need to do now is to just right click on any of these and select Open With and Adobe Photoshop. Okay, so here we are in Adobe Camera Raw. Now I'm going to again select all of my frames. So all of them are highlighted with this thin border. And again, I'm going just to right click on any of them. And okay, maybe I will do this over that one so you can see the menu. And from here, I'm going to select Merge to Panorama. You can hit as well Command M as a keyboard shortcut. Okay, so let's select Merge to Panorama. So now Adobe Camera Raw is calculating preview for my panorama. So it is merging all these images that I have selected. So here we are, we have our pop-up for panorama merge preview and here you can have some options. So for the projection, you can click between these three options. Typically the spherical works best, but you can try other options, for example, cylindrical or perspective. But in this case, okay, so this is not even working with this or file. So I'm going to go for spherical. Here you can manipulate with the margin. So this is how the algorithm automatically merged the image and straighten the horizon. So I will go for something maybe in the middle or actually no, I want to have these rocks visible here. So if that would be set to default, I would have them cropped out. So in this case, I don't mind having the perspective distorted a bit. I want to have the composition just right. So something like that. And here I'm going to switch off apply auto settings. I will enhance my image manually in Adobe Camera Raw and I'm going to select auto crop. So once I have set the projection and my boundary warp, I can now hit merge. So now Adobe Camera Raw has generated the DNG and it's asking me for the place to save my file. So I'm happy to have it positioned in the same folder as my 13 raw files. So I'm going just to hit save. And as you've seen, uh, my files had the extension RAF because I have taken those raw files with Fujifilm camera. So here we are, the merge is ready. We can switch off the film here. So we'll have a little bit more space and less distractions. So I haven't used the auto adjustments for color and for luminosity. I'm going to very quickly show you how you can do this yourself in Adobe Camera Raw. So first of all, I'm going to take a look at white balance. Let's zoom in as you can see here is indicated the magnification level. I'm looking at the image at 50%. The image is massive. We have plenty of detail here. And since it's a stitch of 13 raw files, full size raw files, 
the file is really, really big. So if I want to take a look at 100%, you won't be able to see much. We are just looking at the details. So I'm going to actually zoom out a bit. Let's work at 50% and when it's needed, we'll be zooming in or zooming out. So first of all, I want to take a look at white balance and I feel that the temperature is a little bit too cool. So let's just scroll at the very top of my basic panel and here I will push the temperature slider a little bit towards the right hand side so I will make the image a bit warmer. So I don't want to kill those blues but something around this. Let's zoom out and let's see. So this was before and I have pushed it for 5500. Okay, I think it works quite well. So the image looks a little bit warmer now. I'm going to jump straight into my curves and here I will set the contrast. So I'm going to go for the second curve and here I will create a S-shaped curve, the classic S-shaped curve to make the image a little bit more contrasty. So I'm going to lift the mid-tones and I'm going to push this control point a little bit downwards so we are getting on a more contrasty side. Let's create another control point here so I will control those darker mid-tones as well. Okay, let's push this point that controls shadows a little bit lower so Okay, something like this. Okay, as you can see, when I lifted the bright mid-tones, I started losing some detail here in the clouds. So let's now move over here to the highlight slider and let's try to recover some detail. Let's see what can be done with the highlight slider. So I'm going to push it to the left and go for something about negative 60. So again, this is before and let's go for a negative 65. And I'm going to increase a bit of contrast with this slider as well, just to get a little stronger impact. Okay, when it comes to the shadows, I think it will be a good idea to open them up a little bit. So these sliders in combination with my curve, this is the basic tools that allow me to set luminosity to my liking. So let's now take a look at shadows. I'm going to try to open them up a little bit. So specifically, I'm looking here at this area. So maybe this is a little bit too much. I'm brightening actually those dark mid-tones, brightest shadows, and to lift, let's maybe zoom out, to lift those blacks here, I'm going to manipulate with the blacks slider. So if I go maybe somewhere around here and a bit, maybe for now it's okay. Let's now work with clarity and decays. And the reason why I pushed blacks that far, even though the blacks are already quite bright, is because I want to apply decays and clarity. And specifically, clarity will darken mid-tones in the image. Clarity means adding contrast, adding definition to the mid-tones part in the image. So let's see how it works in action. So I'm going to push clarity slider towards the right hand side and this gives me th this nice punch but it's darkening the blacks. So if I want to go for such a strong value for clarity I need to open up those blacks even more. So something around this and now decay. So the main difference between clarity and decay is that if I added contrast to the mid-tones with clarity, it didn't affect it colors that much. So if I zero this out, take a look what happens to colors if I will touch decay. So if I go with this one, this will add so much saturation to my colors, which is not something that I would be happy with. So basically, this removes the aerial atmosphere. This makes 
all the colors, all the objects even positioned far away from the lens were saturated. So I will be conservative with the haze. I will use the slider, but not that strongly. And I will instead go for clarity. So when it comes to clarity, I will go for the value that I had set before, which is something around 60. Okay, something like this. The haze, maybe we can move a notch to the left. So I don't want to have these colors that saturated, but actually that looks quite good. So let's zoom in. So now we are at 50%. And let's investigate our mountain. So since we have plenty of these textures here, we have just a bit of this nice, soft, clean sky. But apart from this, all those rocks and the foreground, it asks for adding a little bit of texture as well. So with the texture slider, we can add a little bit more definition to those rocks. But let's try not to overdo this. I still want all these rocks that are positioned far away from the lens to be way softer. We can have a quick before and after preview. So this is the original image that we have started with. And that's our image after applying luminosity adjustments. Let's zoom out. Everything looks good. Let's now focus on colors. So when it comes to this image, I feel that the sky is a little bit too strong. It is a little bit too competitive and it works against those rocks. So let's just experiment. What I have in my mind is to make those blues a little bit less saturated and instead inject some cool blue tones into shadows. So let's try. I want to have the, that sky a little bit more silverish, darker and have the rocks, the mountains as the focal point, as the strongest elements in this image. OK, so let's now take a look at colors. So here we have color mixer and you can select either color or HSL. I'm going to go for color because I will be working specifically with the blue color. So let's pick the blue from here and let's now go for the hue. So I will make this blue a little bit more on the cyanish side. Nothing crazy, just a notch. So I will push it for something around negative eight. When it comes to saturation, as I said, I want to make it way less saturated. So immediately, as you can see, those rocks, those mountains are getting way stronger. So by removing saturation, by removing this super strong blue color, we are bringing the viewer's attention towards the mountains. And the image already looks way better, way more stylish. So I'm going to go for negative 60. Maybe this is a bit too much. We can always fine tune it in the end if we feel that the sky is too grayish. When it comes to luminance, let's try to make the sky a little bit darker. So we will increase contrast between the mountains and the sky. So something around negative 30. So we can go for a little bit stronger saturation. OK, I think that looks perfect. So to work further on color, I'm going to jump to split toning and I'm going to inject a little bit of orangey yellow tone into highlights and some cool blue color, some teal shade into the shadows. So let's first take care of the highlights. So let's increase saturation so we can see the color that we will be sampling. And this is too cold. OK, something like this. Saturation 41 is too much. Let's for the moment leave it at 24. And for the shadows, I'm going to go for quite cool blue. Something like this should work well. And let's go down with saturation. It's a good idea to go with these values at this moment after we have set our desired colors. So it's a good idea to go for the zero and now just to balance them out. So now I'm adding a little bit of blue to the shadows and I will balance this color with warm tone that is injected in my highlights. OK, so this gives 
very pleasing result. I want this image to be on the warmer side because I remember that it was a very sunny day despite it was as always quite cool in the Himalayas but I don't want this image to be bluish and cold. Let's now jump back into curves. We are still working on color grading and I'm going to jump straight into the blue channel and I will add a little bit of yellow into the midtones. So I'm going to create a control point here and push my curve towards the bottom. So maybe this is a little bit too much and but I think it works quite well. Let's actually jump back to the blues and we can make the sky a little bit more saturated so it is not taken over by all those yellows. So something like this. I think it works really, really well. We can review our values for clarity. So if I go further for the haze, no, this is darkening the image too strongly. I still want to have a lot of air, a lot of light in these dark areas here. So let's zoom in. And if we take a look here, let's see. So if we go for stronger dehaze, it's making the colors more saturated. So let's not push it too strongly to the right. And the clarity, I think, is set very well. OK, so everything looks good. Let's take a look again at our clouds. I feel that we can make those highlights a little bit brighter. So let's just move back the highlight slider a little bit towards the right. This will increase the contrast so the whites are not going to be that creamy. And let's now take a look at our split toning. So if I go for zero, the highlights and the whites are neutral and Let's just add a little bit, maybe 20 was too much. OK, so let's zoom out. So that's our panoramic. And let's see before this is the starting point and this is the after. So I'm very happy with the result I have achieved. As I've promised you, this was going to be very short edit. As the very last step, typically I would add a little bit of film grain simulation. So at the very bottom here in the effects, you have grain. Let's zoom in. It's a good idea to take a look at the image at 50 or 100 percent when you are applying grain, the film grain, because you want to control of the final result. So when it comes for the grain, I want to add a little bit of this film grain simulation to finish off this image and make it a little bit less digital. OK, so I think this works really, really well. We have this beautiful film grain simulation that unifies all the luminosity ranges in the image. So you don't have any flat blobs in dark areas that are contrasted with smooth and bright areas. Everything has this nice finished touch. So in this video, I have shown you how to create a panorama merge in Adobe Camera Raw. Thanks for watching. This was Kasia Zmokła from Digital Art Classes. See you soon.